Hello everybody, and we are back with our mad lad, the Pyromancer. We will be doing some few things different this time. First off, we are going to reverse our hollowing, which means we will look normal again. Yay! Next, we are going to kindle this bonfire so I can get 10 Estus from it. I tried to kindle as many bonfires as possible, but some people like to keep it at the other way. They don't like to do the kindling. They like to try and make it as hard as they can, or some people just don't do it. You can only kindle when you are in human form, and if you are online, that means that you will only, you will, in hum, excuse me. In human form, you are also vulnerable to online attacks, so that is that. The reason I went back for a bow is because I am going to shoot off that tail. And I forgot to start the timer, so this will probably be a shorter episode than I was planning on. Let's see if I can sneak attack this guy. Nope! He saw me. This guy, I want to see me, because I want to try and push him off. It looks like his pathing isn't going to let him come near me right now. There we go. Come on. Ah, damn it. I bounced off the wall, and he just decided to strike me. Come on, you mad lad. There we go. Now, let's see how long it takes to cut off a tail. Let's go over to this second one, maybe? The reason I went for the bow and arrow is because sometimes it is difficult to get him to do much. Sometimes you can do a multi-hit, other times, no. Uh, I don't know why I'm missing. But then again, that's why you have so many arrows. I'm not sure how many arrows it takes, but we will see how long this takes. He just likes to jump up here, look for who's picking on him. He doesn't actually see you down here. Uh, it's really, really strange. I don't know why they made it this way. Uh, like I said, I am going for a sword that is a really nice sword if you can, if you do not overuse it. It's not really worth the long run. The weapons you can get uh, that actually do scale with your uh, abilities and whatnot or with your stats are really, really nice. I will, again, I will talk about stats later, if not this video, then a later one. I am just right now trying to get this damn sword. And if I manage to get it, I might just turn this episode into a stats and post this one, the episode before, and the one to come after on today. I've already, as I'm recording this, I have already posted the next episode. So I have more to talk about. And I did find out where Patches is supposed to be. So yeah, I'll show you where that is over at Firelink later. And I will get Patches as a um, character as a merchant because he's actually a fairly decent merchant. Let's do this. I 
I believe that this will sever the tail. It just takes a long time. I do not have a very good uh, video editor. I know a lot of people will like to edit their videos. As I said, this is completely unedited. This is just me. I have no script in front of me. This is not really practiced. I have, in fact, as I've shown you in episode one, I do not ha even have a character that has yet to finish this game. I don't have all the trophies, so I have one character, her name is Luna, she's the Wanderer. I have her focusing on trying to get the sorceries. Uh, I have the priest, which I have shown you. He, it, his name is Sol. I figured it was nice, one was the moon, the other was the sun. So, and then Walker here is just a mad pyromancer who found his way into Lordran and is doing his own thing because he wants to see how far he can get as a chosen the dead. My idea is Walker here was traveling from the swamps. He just kind of wanted to wander around when he found out he was dead. He decided he was going to try to just find pyromancy, find out where it came from. He heard some stories that it came from Waldron, and as he wandered through a village, they found out he was undead. He went into hollow form on accident by walking off a cliff. As like an idi like the idiot he seen he is, he walked off a cliff, and he is now trying to be better about cliffs and other people around him. But as he walked off, he realized that they will now know he is undead. So before he could go into human form again, somebody spotted him. They dragged his ass to the undead asylum. And that is where we found him, just wondering, you know, after having been there for several years. Whoa, I got the Drake Sword. Okay, so let's just... Do that. Pull back out the shield and go back to the bonfire. Because we now have the sword we were going for. We want to go this way go down and do not fall off of this ledge if you need to fall fall over here because well that ledge is not fun unless you have a high health you will die so let's see do I can I even equip this sword yet it is higher up no I cannot I need 16 in strength and I only have 14. So do I have any souls? No, I don't have any souls. Okay, so Walker is soulless. Well, not quite, but still. Let's just rest in the bonfire real quick. I need more to level. I am just kind of sitting here on my ass, just waiting. And, okay, so... I have been talking about these stats, and I haven't really explained them. So, your level is based on your soul level. You cannot really do much about it, and if it's a higher soul level, people will be able to, like, just invade you at higher levels. There are some people who have played these games so many times they can just beat the whole game in low level. And they just, they will kick your ass with starting equipment because they know what they're doing. There is nothing wrong with that. You just need to enjoy it. Like I said, the community is not full of gatekeepers that are just get good scrubs. Uh, I have met a lot of people who have encouraged me to get back on the horse and keep trying. And I have just been busting my ass, dying over and over, just enjoying life. If I do not make it, then I do not make it. And if I do make it, then awesome, I made it. 
These guys will always try to attack you when you are backtracking, and it is just fine. It is nothing you really have to worry about. Just remember to pay attention to that green stamina bar and just let them do their thing. You really don't need to worry about much. I got a cracked shield from him. And I will wait for this guy. He is currently in the house. There he goes. And he will come over here because I do not want him sneaking up on me. Because, as I have said before, I have died to this guy. I don't know why. He is one of the weakest little hollows there is. And I've still died to him. So, let's just wait for him. Let him come over here. He will fall down here. And he comes on up and... Sorry. Now, that spot that is twisted up right there, that is where the dark sign is. At least I think that is where the dark sign is. Let's see if I've got one. Nope, I have a manly chest. But let's go back to our tattered robe, because there is no reason to worry with our tattered clothing. We can just be us for a little while. We are not trying to do anything except be us. We are just going to wander around, heading back to Firelink, the That rat, like I said, will fuck you up if you let it. those guys. Let's take this guy out. And he hit me. You son of a bitch. Okay, you are done. Let's quickly go over to this guy before he chucks some pyro. I like to try and get him try and get him swinging at me because then he's not really Come here. Come closer. Good, good, good. He will occasionally drop fireballs, and we want him to drop fireballs because him dropping fireballs is a good thing. Just guzzle down my orange juice here. Kill him. He didn't drop his shield or anything, so that kind of sucks, but oh well. Just come down here. And as I said with the priest, this guy is just kind of waiting for com three other companions. We'll see them after we ring the first bell, or maybe even before, I'm not sure. Uh, but we'll come back down here. When we get to a certain point, we will find out why Firelink is considered one of the most important bonfires ever. It is a friendly place where everybody goes to see you. We just have our fun here. And Patches, the guy that we talked to in the previous video, when he becomes a vendor, he comes over here. And he will become a vendor for this character. So, I, as I said, I am not going to go against the Skelebros because I do not have a holy weapon, and the Skelebros do not do well without holy weapons. But if you come up here, I did not show you this because I forgot about this. You just kind of walk along here, and there is an item over here waiting for you. It is the soul of a lost undead. So, that's good. You can use that. Let's use that. 
And that's like 200. Yeah, 200. But Firelink is a good place for you. You can just relax, enjoy the atmosphere, just sit down and chat with people. You got the forlorn dude over here. You've got the woman, the bonfire attendant down here. She's mute, so she can't really say much. But a dude will appear over here. I'll tell you about him when we find him. You also tend to have uh, your two sorcerer teachers will be over here. And your pyroman your first pyromancy teacher will be here. And each spell at per each person that teaches you spells that are at Firelink are usually the first ones. And then there will be others. But let's head back to where we are supposed to go. And once I get to that bonfire, that other bonfire, I will start sh actually talking about the stats properly. But let's ramble a bit first. Um, the stats, health, and stamina are kind of obvious. Uh, health is your HP, stamina is that green bar right there. And I somehow aggroed all three of these guys. They are not happy with me. I don't know how I managed to do that. Because usually that guy won't aggro unless you go close to the stairs. But. I got him. Let's suck down some more Sunny Z. Come up here. Sneak up on this rat again. And like I said, he will occasionally drop your drop some humanity for you. It's not a lot, but you know, humanity is good. If you get up to ten humanity in that gray circle up there with the one, then you can have then it will really help your find items. And almost everybody will be giving you at least the most common items they drop. Unless it's like 1% or something like that. And then... Yeah, if you are not quick enough to get to that guy, he will start chucking firebombs at you again. Uh, there's just a lot of firebomb dudes around here. And that guy already took off, so let's wait him out again. And our mad lad Pyromancer just stuns. As he waits. And waits and waits and waits. And I used... 30-ish? On that... tail? So, if you know where to aim, it's good, because sometimes you can't hit the damn tail. But if you're just patient and steady, then it's not really much of a problem. And we go again, and again, and travel. And try to lure these guys. That guy spotted me, you know, because he swung his blade. Because hollows tend to be kind of stupid. Yeah, uh, I keep saying things like hollow and whatnot. A hollow is an undead who has basically given up. One who has lost their will, whatever was driving them. Like I said, Walker here is just a mad lad who just wanted to learn more about pyromancy. So, he's just traveling. He's not gonna give up. He will learn more about pyromancy 
He will not give up. He heard that the Witch of Islip is somewhere in Lordran. He can't remember who he heard it from, but he did hear about it. And he knows that the Witch of Islith started the pyromancy thing. So he is not gonna give up. Now that I have rambled on long enough. Okay, so, as you can see, we have our character's name. Whatever covenant they are a part of. Your soul level. As I said, people can invade you. I think it used to be they were you were able to have like people that were 10 levels above or below. I'm not sure if they changed that to if they have to be at your soul level to invade or not. I'll have to look that up later. How many souls you have? Uh, that's kind of obvious. Uh, vitality, your HP. All of your stats will upgrade your defenses. Your attunement is how many spells you currently can equip. As you can see, I can currently only equip two. Your endurance increases your stamina, your equipment load, and your resistance to bleeding. Bleeding is not your friend. It is very painful. Um, your equipment load, it, I believe if you are at maximum equipment load down to, I want to say 50%, maybe lower, I will look this up as well. You have a fat roll, as it's called. It is very slow. Uh, if your equipment load is from 50 to 25 Five. It is a normal roll, and if your equipment load is from 25% uh, and lower, you have a fast roll. Um, your strength boosts whatever weapon scale with strength. You would think that would help with equipment load, but it doesn't. Uh, dexterity tends to boost whatever weapons go with your dexterity. It also boosts how fast you can cast magics. So a lot of people say have your dexterity at like 40 to 45 at whatever minimum before you stop upgrading it for other stuff. Uh, that's actually really good. There is a soft cap on all stats at 50, and if you want to go all the way up to 99, then you are a mad lad yourself, and more power to you. I'm not sure I will ever grind that high on all the stats. It is very difficult, but at 99, you get a huge boost to whatever the stat upgrades. Uh, obviously, vitality and endurance will keep upgrading certain parts of them. Vitality will always upgrade your health, but certain parts of them will keep upgrading until you hit 99. Uh, resistance is your poison defense, and it gives a fairly decent boost to your regular defenses besides the other ones. It, it A lot of people say doesn't matter because poison is just easy to heal through. But it all depends on the play, play style. As I have said, if you want to boost your resistance, go ahead. Intelligence is for sorceries. If you're doing a sorcery build, awesome. That is great. You boost your intelligence. It makes your sorceries more powerful. Faith, same with miracles. If you boost it, it makes your, them more powerful. The reason I am paying a pyroma playing a pyromancer is that basically allows me to ignore these three stats. I might boost them in different playthroughs if you want me to New Game Plus and just kind of keep playing, then that's fine. Humanities are those black sprites I sometimes pick up, and it says number of black sprites within one's bosom, which means I have used them or I have gained them through other means, symbolizes human nature and determines item discovery, as I was saying, and resistance to curse. Curse is not your friend. If you get cursed, you lose your ability to have humanities. You all you lose your humanities. You lose your ability to gain humanities until the curse is broken. 
and your HP is permanently at 50% of its maximum. There is your HP. Character dies when it reaches zero. Obviously, RPG rules. That is your stamina. Depletes various actions, but self-regenerates. You do not want to really go all the way to the bottom. Just leave a little bit to get more stamina back, and it will help. There's your equipment load. Higher number, slower mo slows movement. Exceed max, causes sluggishness. If you are over the maximum amount of your equip load, you cannot roll. You are, like, barely trudging along. You can't really do anything. There's your right hand weapon. There's your slot 2 for your right hand weapon. There's your left hand weapon or your shield. Same with slot 2. Physical defense, which is your defense overall. Your versus against strike weapons. Your versus against slash weapons. And your versus against thrust weapons. So, basically... Bludgeoning... Uh... Slashy swords and stabby spears. Uh, here's your magic defense overall. Defense against flames. Defense against lightning. Uh, poise is, as I was, I said, I believe in the first one. Your poise is, hey, I can take a hit and stay standing. You can't really knock me back. Bleed resistance. Bleed, as I said, is not your friend, especially early in the game. You do not want bleed. It will cause a huge... If your bleed meter hits max, it will cause a huge loss of HP. And if you are not careful, that bleed meter hitting max will kill you. Poison, just like any other game, once the poison bar hits the highest, it will slowly deplete. After Both of these will slowly deplete if you get away from the source. Or if they have hit max, and in the case of bleed, it just gives you that sharp, I'm bleeding thing, and you're done. But poison will slowly go down, even if you are fully poisoned. And then you just can heal through the damage, or you can eat some moss that will remove the poison. Uh, curse, again, like, poise, like poison and bleed, you back away from what's cursing you, and it will lower back down curse is not your friend and your item discovery uh item discovery again really really good uh it allows you to find items obviously uh and then attunement slots for your magics so that is all of the stats um weapon right hand weapons left hand weapons armor rings uh, this is for your bolts, for your crossbow, arrows if you have a bow. You can get five quick select slots. Almost, I say always keep your Estus in your first slot. A lot of people say that. Uh, if you are going for really, really fucking hard, fuck you, I don't wanna, um, then go ahead and not use your Estus. Just take it off your quick select, ignore it don't use it that is a truly i am going to enjoy getting myself fucked in the ass the entire time and then of course your items each item has a description which has a little bit of lore tied to them uh in the first uh the two-part first episode i mentioned that the people that are really good with lore uh, I put links to two of them. They were um, Silvermont and uh, Vadividia. They're both really, really good. Go subscribe to them if you're interested in lore. Uh, Titanite will help you upgrade your weapons. Different Titanite types will upgrade different types of weapons. As you can see, standard, standard and raw standard and crystal lightning and weapons not reinforced normally uh then you've got your key items you've got your spells all of your spells will appear in this area i believe it goes uh 
sorcery, pyromancy, and then miracles at the very bottom. Uh, and then you've got your weapons, which includes your shields. So anything that goes in those two weapon slots will appear here. Then you've got your arrows and bolts on this one, your armor pieces, and your rings. And I believe that is that. That is all of the stats explained. That is all of the uh, ways to find more lore. I will be talking my own head cannons when I get to certain areas. And that is that. So let's rest at the bonfire and I will see you guys in the next episode.